greatest asset. How many believe that? Please raise your hand. Not true at all. Folks, people are not assets. Only good people are assets. Rest are all liabilities. Are you with me? Only good people are assets and rest are all liabilities. And you find goodness anywhere needs to be cultivated. Evil happens. See, this is like if we want to have a good garden, we must consciously plant good seeds of good flowers and good fruits. But weeds keep coming automatically, don't they? Weeds keep coming automatically. That is the nature of the beast. Goodness must be cultivated. Evil happens. Folks, having worked with the corporate world for the last three decades, when I talk to the top person in the organization, and they say, can you do corporate training? I said, of course, we will do that. But keep one thing in mind, what we are doing in your corporate today is repair work. This is called repair work. But then, and with that in mind, at some point, about 10 years ago, people have been after me and they say, Mr. Kera, why don't you open up a premium management institute? There's hardly any. And that is not only true in India, by the way, this is global. I will not mention the names here, but anyway, my two daughters, they've done their masters in the U.S. I have two grandsons, they're doing the schooling in India. And there are some universities in the U.K. who give you a global accredited MBA with 260 teaching hours with assignment, no assessment. And there are not one. Graduates that are coming out of our schools and colleges, they're not employable. And if you think about it a little more, the balance 10% also has become a question mark. And folks, what I have studied the education systems, I would say 90% of what is being taught in schools and colleges, you really don't end up using in real life. And 90% of what is needed in real life is not being taught in schools and colleges. And folks, I do not blame the system. See, the easiest thing is when people don't want to accept responsibility. You know what they say? System is bad. System is bad. But who made the system? We make the system and they point the finger at the students. That our kids need to be trained. My big question is, why point the finger at the student? What about the faculty? Hello? What about the faculty? Don't they have to be trained? But wait a minute. What about the trustees? Hello? But don't they have to be trained? In fact, it starts from there. It starts from there. Folks, you will find anywhere you see something running smoothly, you will see the leadership is good. You see a mess, 
see the leadership is best up. It is always, it starts from the top. Anywhere in the world, go check out. Folks, many times you hear people saying, the leader is good, but his advisors are bad. Have you heard that? Yes, no. How many believe it is true that it can happen? The leader is good, but he can have bad advisors. How many agree with that? Please raise your hand one more time. Well, that is not true at all. Folks, tell me all over the world who chooses his advisor. Chooses the advisors, always the what? Always the leader. Go check out anywhere, whether it's political leadership, social leadership, corporate leadership. Leadership changes the entire advisory team. Changes. You know what happens? Keep in mind, folks, we don't get advisors in life the kind of people we want. We always get advisors the kind of people we are. Are you with me? Go check out, folks. A crooked entrepreneur will always have a crooked attorney and a crooked accountant as advisor. An honest entrepreneur will always have an honest attorney, honest accountant as advisor. Are you with me? You know why? Comfort levels are there. Comfort levels! Folks, if there's one take home tonight, this is one take home. We don't get advisors in life the kind of people we want. We get advisors the kind of people we are. We don't get friends in life the kind of people we want. We get friends in life the kind of people we are. And once in a while, once in a while, it can happen that a leader by mistake might be a wrong advisor. It can happen. But then it won't last. If it lasts, it means the values match. Folks, we find all over the world we don't have business problems. We have people problems. And when we take care of our people problems, most of our business problems are automatically resolved. And whenever a person says, I cannot do this, they really say two things. One, either I don't know how to do it, or I don't want to do it. Now, if they're saying, I don't know how to do it, that's a technical training education issue. But if they're saying, I don't want to do it, they really say two things. One, either I don't care to do it, that's an attitude issue or I feel strongly enough not to do it and that's a values issue and we find folks all over the world majority of the challenges fall into these two categories either they are attitude issues or they are value issues folks think about it how come under the same set of circumstances some people break records while others break themselves. How come? Identical circumstances. There's something to do with that. A study was conducted at Harvard University which said that 85% of the time a person gets a job or a promotion is because of the attitude. 
50% how smart they are, what facts and figures they know, and what degrees they have. And almost 100% of education dollars go to teach facts and figures, which accounts for only 15% of success. Folks, I just wrote an article and sent it to New York Times for publication. Within one week, quickly they responded and they said, cut this article into half. Then we will think of publishing. So right now I'm in the process of condensing it. But here is what I wrote in that article. Folks, the amount of information we get today in one day, we never got this much information in 100 years. Folks, how many agree with that? Please raise your hand. Well, this one is a yes. Anybody disagree with that? Please raise your hand. Okay, nobody. Anybody confused? Please raise your hand. Anybody too lazy, they cannot raise their hand. Okay. Okay. Folks, bottom line is, that is true, the amount of information we get today, one day, we never got this much information in 100 years. This is the speed of change. And folks, Globally, you find 50% businesses fail within the first five years. And in the U.S., 90% businesses fail within the first five years. It is alarming. And with the speed of change, the way things are happening, products are getting obsolete the day they're getting launched. Go check out when a new product is launched, especially electronics. The consultants tell their client, You got 180 days to make a billion, otherwise, back up. Products are getting obsolete the day they're getting launched, and knowledge is getting obsolete within two to three years. Go check out any engineering graduates. By the time they get to the fourth year, what they learned in the first year became obsolete. Are you with me? Check out medicine. By the time they get to the fourth and the fifth year, what they learned in the first year became obsolete. This is the speed of change. So literally, it has become a cliche Two, persuasion skills. Three, prioritizing skills. They are constant, have never changed, will never change. Folks, why I say these three skills, one people skills, go check out all through history. We are high for our skills. But we are fired for our behavior, yes, no. All over the world, we are hired for our skills, but we are fired for our behavior. Folks, two, you know this one thing, that the lower a person is in life, 90% of the time goes in technical skills, less than 10% in people skills. And the higher you go up, guess what happens? It just, what happens? Reverses. Folks, and interestingly, Technology and technicians 
You can always buy with money. But the wealthiest person in the world must build and create relationships, don't they? person in the world must build and create relationships. Somebody said, well, in a little crude language, you can buy a dog, but you cannot make them back the tail. Are you with me? And that is so true. Folks, there was a leadership conference in the U.S. And one thing came out rather strong that the current generation today is very tech savvy. They're very comfortable with the computers. Well, that's the positive side. But the flip side is that they have become very uncomfortable with people. Are you with me? They have become very uncomfortable with people. And you know something today, folks? Socializing has been redefined. There are three, four friends. They say, let's go for dinner tonight for a restaurant. And they go to the restaurant, and guess what? All four people are doing this, 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 and after one hour they have dinner. Oh, that was a nice dinner. <laughs> this is called socializing today. What a joke. What a disgrace it has become. Folks, it doesn't stop here. Gallup did a survey which said 63% of people who go to work are disengaged. You know what that means? It means they don't do their job. They don't do their job. And additional 24% are actively disengaged. You know what that means? They make sure that others also don't do the job. <laughs> Folks, that only leaves 13% of people who go to work actually work. Only 13% of people who go to work actually do work. And it also said that, that people who go to work, they put in two, three, sometimes even four hours on social media and personal email. The question is, is that what we're getting paid for? Is that what we are getting paid for? Difficult question. Folks, is it not an integrity issue? Is it not an integrity issue? Four hours. Folks, we need to redefine the word integrity and wages, which means wages without work monster stealing. Are you with me? No. Wages without work Stealing. So the question is, are we entitled to the money that we are getting? I didn't say earning. Earning would have been different. We are getting. Folks, We took on last year 
a client. Last year, we took on a Swiss company, the affiliation, they have an affiliation of somebody in India, we took them as a client for a consulting assignment on a long-term basis, which we have only started doing now. So I got a call from the CEO saying, Mr. Kira, can you please do some sales screening for our people? So I told the, the CEO, I said, look, sir, just tell me what is the end result you're looking for. Let me see if I can do it. If I can't do hire somebody else. But what training to do, that's my decision, not yours. So he said, I want my sales going up. I said, give me a few days, let me check your salespeople first, where they are right now. So we shadowed them a little bit. A week later, I called the CEO. And I said, sir, your people don't need sales training. They need training again, basic courtesy, etiquette, manners, I said, yes, your people need basic training in courtesy, etiquette, manners, integrity. He said, what does that mean? I said, here is what it means. I said, many of your salespeople, they have appointments and they're running late and they don't even have the courtesy to call and say, I'm sorry, I'm running late. And time to call is when? Before you got late or after you got late? Okay. And then they walk in late and they don't even have the courtesy to say I'm sorry, I apologize, I kept you waiting. And then in case they call, in case they call, say on the phone, I'm stuck in traffic. Now don't get me wrong, traffic has become a real issue all over the world, that is true. But many times they leave only five minutes before the appointment and they blame it on. They don't have the guts and the integrity to say, I'm sorry, I did find only the first line is difficult. Look, second becomes easier, third becomes easier, fourth becomes easier, and the fifth becomes easier. And very soon you are dealing with a chronic liar who is a rascal. Are you with me? And you find that People who lie also steal. <laughs> if this is your starting point, if this is your starting point, tell me how long do you think this relationship will last? And I have said, you want to teach him selling? You want to teach him selling. calls from corporates and they say, Mr. Kira, can you come and motivate our people? I said, sir, before you hire me, I have to decide if I want to hire you. Just because you got a few bucks doesn't mean I just come there. And we bring from to God and I talk about humility for every one client we take. We refuse five. 
of all, I need to know what are your values. He said, what difference does it make? I said, it makes a difference. You know why? Because if you motivate an idiot, what do you have? You have a motivated idiot. Which is worse than having a demotivated idiot. Something could be legal 